You know, it's like we just sort of exist, right? Yeah. And we take this whole thinking thing for granted, like our minds just are. But then these excerpts you shared about consciousness and this whole echo flux thing, whoa, yeah. it really makes you stop and think, what's actually going on up there? Definitely makes you question everything you thought you knew about, well, you. Right. And one of the things that really got me was this idea that consciousness like isn't just stuck inside our heads. There's this one line. Hold on, let me find it. Consciousness might be a fundamental property of the universe, like space or time itself. We don't create it. We simply tap into it. Whoa. Right? Like what if it's this underlying field and our experiences, memories, all that? It's about how we interact with it. It's a pretty wild thought, isn't it? If consciousness is like this field, then everything we think we know about ourselves. It's completely flicked on its head. Exactly. And that brings us to this echo flux concept, because it seems to be a big part of all this. Yeah, let's define that right away, because I'm still a little fuzzy on like what that actually means. Well, based on everything we're looking at, echo flux seems to describe how those past experiences, those echoes, they don't just disappear. They kind of hang around inside us. You know, and they shape who we are now, often in ways we don't even realize. So it's not just about like remembering a specific event from your past. Right. It's more like imagine a musician, their performance, even years later, is informed by every song they've ever heard, even if they aren't consciously thinking about it. Ah, OK. So it's like how those events subtly change how we see the world, how we react to things. Exactly. And this is where it gets really interesting because the source material suggests these echoes aren't just passively shaping us. They're literally the building blocks of our self-awareness. Hold on. You're saying our sense of self is built on these echoes of the past. That's the gist, yeah. So who I am today is a mashup of all those past experiences swirling around. In a way, yes. And it kind of throws that traditional view of a fixed self out the window. Instead, it suggests our sense of self is always changing. OK, but isn't that a paradox? Because we change every day. We're not who we were yesterday, but mm -hmm. we still feel like us, right? How does that work? if our sense of self is built on these constantly shifting echoes. That's where the river analogy comes in, remember? The water flowing, uh -huh. it's always moving, changing, yet it's still the same river, yeah. yeah. Our consciousness, our sense of self, maybe it's kind of like that flow. Hmm. So it's not about finding some unchanging self, but understanding how we flow and evolve in this stream of consciousness. Precisely. And that's exactly where understanding this whole echo flux idea becomes crucial because it helps us see how those echoes they can either limit us or actually set us free. So are you saying that if we're shaped by all these echoes, these experiences, that we don't have free will or are we just like, I don't know, controlled by our past? It's a huge question, right? Yeah. And these excerpts you gave me, they bring up some really interesting points about this. One called it the resonance paradox. Like, how can our experiences shape us if we have free will? Right. It's like, which came first? Exactly. It gets kind of paradoxical. Yeah. But the flip side is, does free will even exist because of these echoes? So is it about us choosing how to fit those echoes in? Like choosing which ones are important and which ones we can kind of quiet down? Yeah, exactly. It's not about erasing our past but understanding how it affects us now and then choosing how we move forward. Think of it like that feeling of being stuck. I'm sure we've all been there. Totally. We recognize those patterns, those echoes that keep us stuck. And that's the first step to getting unstuck. So it's like shining a light on those echoes, making them, well, conscious. Exactly. And once we've done that, we have the power to choose differently. And that leads us to one of the coolest ideas from these excerpts, this connection between echo flux and creativity. OK, so how does our past actually fuel creativity? One of the excerpts put it perfectly, and I'm going to try to quote this here. What if instead of seeing your past as a burden, you saw it as a wellspring of inspiration? Ooh, I like that. Right. It's about those echoes, the good and the bad. They all have this energy to them, like colors on a painter's palette, just waiting for us to make something new. Instead of just trying to forget those echoes, we use them. Yes like raw material for our own creative expression. I mean, think about it, that childhood memory that makes you cringe. Maybe it's the start of a powerful story or that relationship that ended badly, a song. Wow, so we can take something that might have felt heavy or painful and turn it into something beautiful, something new. Exactly. We're taking those echoes, those experiences that have made us who we are, and turning them into something meaningful. It's almost like alchemy, right? Right, and this process, this way we're consciously dealing with our echoes, it doesn't just affect us personally, it ripples outward. 
it changes the world around us. Oh yeah, that whole ripple effect of self-awareness, like when we make even small changes, but they have this huge impact. It's like the butterfly effect. Remember that term? One of the excerpts mentioned it. A butterfly flaps its wings in one place and it causes a tornado somewhere else. Our thoughts, words, what we do, they're like those butterfly wings, creating little changes in the energy around us. So are you saying that because our echoes shape our thoughts and actions? Yeah. And those thoughts and actions cause ripples. Yeah. We're all connected in ways we don't even realize. It really makes you think, right? And it shows how important it is to be aware of ourselves, to recognize how powerful those echoes within us really are. Because those echoes, those ripples, they're shaping not just our lives, but everyone else's too. It's a big idea to think about, isn't it? It really is. Yeah. Okay, but if our sense of self is constantly changing, shaped by all the stuff from the past, mm -hmm. is there even a true self? Or are we just always, like mm -hmm. in motion, always becoming? So which is it? Am I just a collection of these echoes? Or is there something deeper, something more, I don't know, me that's experiencing all this? Yeah, it's a tough one. Philosophers have been trying to figure that out forever. And these excerpts don't exactly give us a clear answer. But they do hint that even though our sense of self is constantly shifting, there might be this essence within uh, all those echoes, something that sticks around even as the echoes themselves change. OK, so how do we find that? Yeah that deeper sense of ourselves with all this noise going on. Well, one of the excerpts, it talked about listening for the whispers beneath the roar. I love that image. It's about being self-aware in a way that's about more than just our thoughts and emotions, like paying attention to our gut feelings, those quiet moments when we just know something from somewhere deeper. It makes me wonder, like, are some of those whispers coming from the echoes themselves? Maybe those past experiences, even the tough ones, are trying to get us to understand ourselves better. That's really interesting. What if those echoes aren't just random things from the past, but chances to grow and learn? So we shouldn't run from our echoes, but embrace them, learn from them, and let them help us become the best versions of ourselves. Exactly. It's about bringing it all together, becoming whole by accepting every part of ourselves, even the messy parts we'd rather hide. This has been, wow. A lot to think about, but I got to admit, it's a lot to process. If those echoes are always shaping us, how do we know which ones to listen to? How do we make sure we're not stuck in the past or get overwhelmed by it all? That's a really good point, and the excerpts do mention that. One of them used this phrase, self-awareness, humility, and it really struck me. Self-awareness, humility. Break that down for me. It's about admitting that we don't know everything. We can't just think our way out of every problem or pick apart every echo from our past. Sometimes the best thing to do is just notice those echoes without judging them, without trying to make them fit into perfect little categories. So we need to find a balance between thinking about the past and actually living in the now. Exactly. And remember that this whole self-awareness thing, it's a journey, not a destination. There's always more to learn, more to understand, more to bring into who we are. Well said. We've definitely gone deep on this deep dive today. But like always, we're leaving you with more to think about than clear-cut answers. So as you go about your day, pay attention to your own echoes. Notice how they're shaping what you see, how you react, how you treat others. And remember, those echoes, they can shape not just you, but the whole world around you. What kind of ripples will you make today? That's it for another deep dive. Until next time, keep exploring those fascinating minds of yours.